In our previous episode about the Shroud of Turin, we analyzed the bloodstains present on the cloth and how they match the gospel accounts of Jesus' crucifixion. We also uncovered the surprising correlation between the Sudarium of Oviedo and the Shroud of Turin. Just not to get confused, the Sudarium of Oviedo is a face cloth that covered Jesus' face after his death on the cross, while the Shroud of Turin is believed to be the burial garment used to cover the entire body when Jesus was laid in the tomb. Both artifacts provide a valuable insight into the events surrounding the death of Jesus, making this discovery all the more fascinating. But upon the Shroud's mysterious appearance in the 14th century Europe, the church was determined to confirm its authenticity and establish whether it could be traced back to the time of Jesus. So in 1988, there was a piece of sample cut out from the corner of the Shroud, which was sent to three different laboratories for carbon dating. And the outcome was devastating as the results revealed a date range between 1260 AD and 1390 AD, a full thousand years after the death of Jesus, which was around the same time it appeared on the European records. And the media rushed and made headlines around the world that the Shroud of Turin is a medieval forgery. Despite the chaos, the Shroud contains bloodstains that are consistent with those of a crucified individual. This is significant because crucifixion was no longer practiced after the 4th century. Additionally, the photonegative image on the shroud does not make any sense if a medieval forger was trying to convince the people of his time. Furthermore, as we explored in our first episode, the image on the shroud has distinct characteristics that even our modern technology cannot reproduce, leaving us to wonder how a medieval forger could have possibly created it. And now we are left with the haunting question, did a medieval forger truly create an artifact with such baffling properties or did the carbon dating just went wrong? For over a decade, there was never any question regarding the accuracy of the carbon dating performed in 1988, which concluded that the Shower of Turin was a medieval forgery. However, this all changed when a couple from the United States, namely Brentford and Marino, discovered a significant variance in the weave pattern of the sample that was obtained for carbon dating, and suggested that the sample taken was a mixture of older and newer material, probably from a medieval repair which skewed the radiocarbon dating. And they even verified with textile experts and they suggested that it might be a French reweave. And we know that individuals in the past used to exhibit the shroud publicly by holding its corner, which may have resulted in some degree of damage to the cloth over time. But Benford and Marino were not scientists to prove any of those claims. Later, Ray Roger, the lead chemist of the Sturb team, was also skeptical about Benford and Marino's claims. So he took a leftover sample, looked into the microscope and found traces of cotton, gum and dye that were not present in the rest of the cloth. So in 2005, he published a secular scientific journal concluding that the material used in radiocarbon dating is significantly different from the main cloth and that the sample was poorly chosen. And due to the loss of vanillin in the shroud fiber, he suggested that the shroud is between 1300 to 3000 years old, which is similar to the linen found with the Dead Sea Scrolls. And it was the first scientific journal to challenge the 1988 carbon dating. Later, Benford and Marino's paper was also in Chemistry Today and half a dozen of scientific journals were published that challenged the radiocarbon dating done in 1988. For nearly 29 years following the radiocarbon dating of the shroud, the raw data had not been made public. However, in 2017, an Italian researcher by the name Tristan Caspianca utilized the Freedom of Information Act to compel the British Museum to release the data. As a result, the raw data was finally analyzed and the findings were published in the Occumentary Journal in 2019. And the analysis strongly suggests there is a statistical problem with the raw data of the carbon dating and lacks homogeneity in the data to determine the age of the shroud. For instance, the results from two labs do not even overlap with each other and they suggested a new radiocarbon dating with robust protocols. Due to the lack of access to the shroud, there were no further radiocarbon dating was conducted. However, a researcher named Julia Fonti and his team obtained samples from previous examination and conducted three alternative dating methods which involved analyzing the tensile strength of the thread and some spectral analysis. And the results obtained by his team do not align with the 1988 carbon dating results but consistent with the time period of Jesus. In 2022, a new dating technique utilizing wide-angle X-ray scattering technology was used to date the linen threads of the Turin Shroud. The analysis conducted using this method indicated that the fabric of the Shroud is significantly older than the radiocarbon dating conducted in 1988, and the result suggests that the Shroud could be 2000 years old, which would be consistent with the idea that it is a real burial cloth of Jesus. However, this examination needs to be conducted on multiple samples to confirm the results. 
Furthermore, the carbon dating conducted in 1988 disregarded some of the crucial protocols that was decided early. These protocols include the need for multiple samples from different areas and including seven laboratories. But the sample was taken from a single area and only three labs were selected for analysis. Additionally, the test required to be conducted blindly and a complete absence of communication between the labs, but both of which were regrettably ignored. So the 1988 carbon dating of the shroud raises significant doubts. Firstly, there is uncertainty regarding whether the sample taken truly represents the entire cloth. Additionally, statistical analysis reveals that the raw data from the carbon dating lacks homogeneity, which questions the reliability of the results. Furthermore, the carbon dating results do not align with the results of the other alternative dating techniques. Consequently, the ability of the 1988 carbon dating to accurately determine the calendar age of the shroud is heavily questioned. Although the European history of the shroud only goes back to the 14th century, it does not necessarily imply there are no earlier references to it. As a matter of fact, there are records of people carrying the burial garment of Jesus as early as the 2nd century, and there are records and artwork depicting cloths bearing the imprint of Jesus. Nevertheless, it remains unclear whether the cloths mentioned in the historical records are the same as the shroud presently located in Turin. If we take the sudarium of Oviedo into consideration, it pushes the date much earlier than the carbon dating results due to its matching forensic detail with the shroud as we saw in a previous episode. In fact, the sudarium holds strong historical evidence dating back at least to the 6th century in Jerusalem and with some historical traces reaching as far back as the 3rd century. This suggests that the sudarium of Oviedo and the shroud of Turin likely belong to the same person, potentially at any time before the 6th century and most probably in Jerusalem. However, when the sudarium was subjected to carbon dating, it yielded a date from the 8th century, despite our knowledge that it existed much earlier than that. And it is evident that the carbon dating has failed in both cases, particularly when considering the sudarium. And this failure could be possibly explained by the neutron absorption hypothesis proposed by Robert Rucker, a retired nuclear engineer. Contrary to the reweave hypothesis, the neutron absorption hypothesis suggests that the carbon atoms are altered by absorbing neutrons from the radiation emitted from the body, which makes the carbon atom look much younger than it's supposed to. And according to his hypothesis, if a sample of the shroud closer to the body image is carbon data, it would yield a more recent date. This could possibly explain why the shroud and the sudarium looks relatively younger than they are. While it is indeed an intriguing hypothesis, drawing any firm conclusion would require additional data and further investigation. And the shroud continues to be a mystery until further examination. Fortunately, with the advances in technology, the shroud can be now be examined with minimal damage and let's hope that the church will permit further examination to shed light on this enigmatic piece of cloth. Here are some final thoughts from Barry Schwartz, the official documenting photographer of the Sturp team that the answer to faith is never going to be on a piece of cloth, but in the eyes and hearts of those who look upon it. Even Jesus said that, that the kingdom of God is within us. So I always tell people, yeah, you can look at the shroud and all that, but the real answer to it is within yourself.